Every good developer gets this itchy feeling when you see too much magic. I want to know how things work. And that's what we're going to talk about today with view transitions. Now, if any of us have used view transitions, it's probably been within a framework like Astro or Next.js with React 19.2 that just released. So I want to kind of peel back the layers today and look at the CSS for how this works natively within the browser. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Now, I should mention there are two different kinds of view transitions before we jump in here too much. There's the cross-document view transition within the same origin, like on your own website. That's what we're going to look at today. There's also a single document view transition where you can actually fire off like a start view transition on the document itself and do that as almost like a SBA within a certain page. We're not going to look at that. That's mostly JavaScript related. I do want to look at the CSS that's involved and swapping out one page for another, how you can manipulate it, understand what's happening under the hood. And again, we're going to mostly focus on CSS. Okay, so I've got this basic starting page here. You see I've got an about, an index, and a CSS that's shared by both of them that's just got some template stuff to get this up and running. So if I click here, it goes to about, same thing up here, home, etc. Okay, so nothing super complicated so far. So let's say we want to add view transitions to this. Well, it's real easy. All we have to do is do at view transition, and then we just simply declare transition or uh, navigation almost for I forgot it, <laughs> auto, just like that. So that's all we have to do. And now if I come over here and click learn more, it should actually transition between the pages. You see, we get like a little fading animation right here. Now this is all happening baked into the browser. And if you want to see how this actually works, let's make this thing go bigger. And I can open up the console down here. And if you do command shift P, you can search for animation. Uh, animation, there we go, show animations. And let's just pause the animation and then look at the elements. So when I click about here, you'll notice that we get this view transition right here. Now this happens natively within the browser. Let me zoom in a bit so we can actually see. And I'll come back to home so we can see. Okay, view transition right here. You'll see we're pausing it. And the view transition itself, this pseudo element, has a group. It's called view transition group. And the root by default is what's set as the group name. That's because, I'll show you in a second, but basically the root itself is declared that in native style sheets, the ones built into the browser. Now, this also has what's called the view transition image pair, where it pairs up the old and the new page. Now, what's happening is the old page, uh, we take a snapshot of that, the browser does, and the new page, it takes a snapshot of that, it's like a live snapshot, and then it transitions between the two. Reading the spec, that's what seems to be happening here. So you can see here, we've got both of these things, and it's actually doing all this natively, just using the browser. Now I can go ahead and advance this slowly and just smoothly move through here and you can see then it removes those pseudo elements as well. So that's what's happening under the hood. Let's actually customize it now. So we can actually customize the experience using those pseudo elements. We can grab them and style them the way we want. So the first thing I wanna do is just talk about how that view transition name of root gets applied. All native style sheets have view transition uh, view transition name like this uh, set to root on the root so you can just declare root directly so we don't have to do this it does it for us but normally you can do that on elements and we'll look at that in a second okay next uh, let's go ahead and use the pseudo element view transition group we will use the root right here again this comes default that's why we don't have to declare it and now what I can do is change this around so let's say I take the animation uh, duration and let's set this to like I don't know three seconds and as soon as I do that I can come over here and click learn more and notice it's real slow all right by default it's going to take this root and going to set it to three seconds now that's not super helpful, but at least helps us visualize what's, visualize what's going on here. Let's now take the root, uh, sorry, the view transition old, and we're gonna pass in the root as that. And I wanna set, uh, let's see, sorry, get out of here. All right, <laughs> I wanna set an animation on here. We'll do, uh, let's do fade from uh, left, or fade out left, how about that? Out left, and we'll do, I don't know, let's do 500 milliseconds and ease in forwards, that's fine, okay? Now let's do the same thing if I come down here. And let's see, yeah, fade in right, that works. And then I need to set keyframes. And now let's do our own thing. All right, keyframes. And I want fade out uh, left. And here I want to just go to something. So by default, it's going to be where it's at. So I'm just going to say two. And we're going to use the translate like this directly instead of the transform because the browser actually attaches a bunch of like animations to this. So if I just take the whole transform for myself, I'll overwrite all the browsers. So I don't want to do that. And I'm just going to go negative 100 view width and zero. So Y is, um, this is Y, this is X. Okay, so that's the first thing. I'm going to fade the old one out. Next, I want to fade in the right one. Let's see, see if this is correct. 
from, nice try. All right, <laughs> we're going to go, uh, no, 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 that was right. Yes, we're going to go from off the page 100 view width all the way back to the middle of the page. So just like that, by adding these two things, you can see that now it'll actually swap the whole page one over the other. So I can actually move between the pages. Let's see, why is it not working now? There we go. All right, there's the about. There is the home. Let's see, maybe I need to restart my dev server. Let's do that now. Okay, there we go. So now I should be able to click here and it transitions, it slides the two. But notice I've got this like nav area and I don't really want that to move as well. That's kind of jarring. I actually want this to stay put and just the page itself move. Well, there, that's where you can declare your own view transition name on items. So if I jump over here, you'll notice they both have this nav element. It's the exact same element. So I can set this in a couple different places. I can set it directly in the HTML here, or in this case, let's just come here and set like the nav right here uh, and the footer. Uh, no, actually I need these to be separate, don't I? So we're gonna come in here and say view transition name, and we're gonna set this to nav. It doesn't really matter what I name it. It's just that it has a name. This takes it out of that root and allows it to have kind of its own declaration. In fact, it's part of its own little group as well. And maybe we can even see that in a second. Let's also take the footer. We'll do the same thing. View transition footer like that. And there we go. Okay, so let's make this thing big again. Come over here. We're going to pause this. And then let's go ahead and click home. And as soon as I do that, uh, hopefully we've got this view transition here. And notice now I've got three different groups. Just because I gave it a name, I already had the, the root one that's built in. Then now I have the nav. And the nav has an image pair with the old and the new. They look the exact same, right? So it knows not to transition them because they're, they're the exact same. Same thing here with the footer. Uh, we've got the old and the new, and that's down there. Now the root is everything else. So because those have their own name, they're kind of broken out from the flow. And I can actually step through this as well. And you see how that moves those two, but it leaves the footer and uh, the header alone. Because the only thing that I'm affecting in that animation, my custom animation, is the actual root that I declared right here, right? Um, the name of that view transition, which again, the browser gave me by default. So now if I come over here and click learn more, it'll slide everything else, but leave the footer and the header alone. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so there's another thing we can do. And you might say, ooh, this gives me a good idea. What happens if I name this image? Uh, because it's on both pages, I should be able to click between those two and have it like fade in and move between. And you would be right. So we can name this uh in either place, like in CSS, or we can just name it in the HTML. They're slightly different because this one has a class of profile. I don't remember what the other one has, but let's just use a style tag, right? And we're gonna say view transition name, and we'll just name this profile, I guess. And then let's grab the same thing. And while we're here, why don't we do it here as well? So we'll say uh, view transition uh, name, and we'll call this head or heading. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've got that in the about. Let's go to the home. We have to only have one name declared per page. So I can't have multiple um, like navs or multiple uh, footers. The names for these view transition, like whatever those are properties, I guess, they have to be unique per page. So it can look them up and it takes a snapshot of the old. It says, hey, do I have this same name in the new? I do, then it knows what to do between the two of them. All right, so same thing over here. We'll add that there and we can do the same thing here, style view transition uh, name and we'll set this to heading what was it heading heading header yeah heading that'll work okay so that should work we should close this off here uh, close this off here this doesn't like me for some reason am I doing something wrong I guess we'll see okay so now if I come over here yeah no that works I just for some reason the the styling here isn't looking right so if I click here between the two, you'll notice it actually fades the two between those two like that. Everything else on the page moves, but that stays the exact same. I'm not sure why I'm getting issues. Uh, it may be because I'm using this like um, fake kind of little server and it may be throwing issues for me. But there you go. You see it kind of transitions between the two. Uh, so it's really cool to just by adding this name, now it kind of breaks it out in its own little section. Not to be pedantic, but let's open this up and see it. All right, so let's come back to the animation and let's pause it, and then let's transition between the two. So I'll go to about, or I was already on about maybe. Come on, let's try this again. Okay, so I go back to home, 
Oh, I, I paused it. <laughs> all right, so now we can come over here, view transition, and look at all these we have. The root, the nav, the profile, the heading, the footer. So it tracks all of these. Now, obviously, this can get kind of expensive at some point, like uh, speed-wise. So you may want to be careful. You can actually use the events you get from JavaScript to say, when this event fires, then look up all these items instead of having multiple different view transition groups. So that's something we could look at in a future video if you're interested in that. Uh, now let's step through this. And there we go. All right, so it fades between those two. Now, because I have timing on the one and not on the other, that's why like the one takes a little bit longer. Now, there is one thing you probably want to think about, and that would be that this probably should be in some kind of media query. So if we take uh, prefers, let's see if I can remember how to do this, prefers reduced motion, probably set this to no preference, and then we can do all this stuff. So it sets navigation to auto, or you can set navigation to none with it on. But again, come inside here. We'll look at the prefers reduced motion right here. So let's emulate this. And now if I click about, it's not going to do any of that stuff. Whereas if I close this down, it should do that transition, right? So that's probably something you want to pay attention to as well. Now, again, there's a lot more you can do here. There's actually an HTML item you get, um, but this is kind of the basic understanding of how this works under the hood. And again, we're only talking about cross document within the same origin, within your own website. Now, there is a way to fire all this off within the same page. So you can actually have like dynamic moving parts uh, within the same page using kind of a single page um, application structure. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in like the JavaScript events we get, let me know. But I thought this was at least helpful for me to kind of visualize what's going on in these frameworks when it's adding this. And it's not actually that hard to do yourself. Uh, but obviously, if you're using a framework that makes it easier, why not make it easier? Well, I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, let me know if you're interested in these kinds of tips. Uh, I don't know what else to do on a Sunday afternoon, but start looking at MDM docs and kind of pick apart how things work. And uh, hopefully this is helpful to somebody else as well. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.